morning, everybody. It's Father DeRosa, and we are going to talk today as part of our ongoing catechesis about um, the scapular of Mount Carmel, the brown scapular of Mount Carmel. Now, July, and we're going to find out why in a minute, July is a month particularly dedicated to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, very big in the Carmelite community. When I was a kid, somebody gave me a, a scapular. I don't have it anymore. A scapular is a, uh, a little piece of brown cloth about the size of a postage stamp, a large postage stamp, with uh, a, a rope that goes around to another piece of brown cloth, uh, oftentimes with an image of Our Lady on either side. And somebody gave me this and they said, you know, this is very holy and it's very important. You have to be very careful with it. The scapular will protect you. And I thought, okay, um, why? Well, it will. It's Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Mm, you know. Oh, okay, but why? <laughs> uh, typical kid's question, right? But not a bad question, you know, why? So uh, eventually I would become a priest and began researching more about Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And one of the first places I went was the ritual for the blessing of the scapular and for its conferral to people. And I looked through, this is the North American version of the Carmelite ritual, and it says, well, the, the scapular is a sign of Our Lady's protection and, uh, and of a life devoted to Mary and to her son Jesus. And reading this, I'm saying, why? What, what's, what's the deal? Explain more to me. Again, it's something that often happens in the church. You get these sort of throwaway lines, lines that somebody assumes everybody knows, but which is not necessarily the case anymore. So, we did more research and found out last year that the Carmelites, a community of priests, there are also Carmelite nuns, would be happy to send one of their representatives to speak to the parish, and so they did. And so last year, uh, in honor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, one of the, the fathers came and finally explained the story. Now, Mount Carmel is in the midst of Lebanon, and it is the place where supposedly uh, Elijah battled the prophets of Baal in the Old Testament when he was showing how faithful he could be as a prophet to God and proving how real God is as opposed to the false gods of the Baals. So this is a place in our Old Testament history that was very, very powerful in terms of spirituality. Later on, uh, in the times of the New Testament, because of those Jewish connections, Christian hermits would go and live on the slopes of Mount Carmel to try to sort of get close to the spirit of Elijah and to uh, that idea of a holiness and a connection to the one true God. Eventually, these hermits would form a religious community dedicated to Our Lady and to being close to her and finding her maternal protection for themselves and for the church. And these became known as the Carmelites. Now, there's a problem because eventually, of course, the Muslim conquest meant that the Carmelites were no longer able to live in the Middle East. And as after the Crusades, the Christians began retreating toward the ocean and then across the ocean, the Carmelites left with them. And they set up monasteries on the different Mediterranean islands, leading back to Sicily and then eventually to southern France and to England, all the places where the Crusaders came from. And Carmelite life grew, but there's a problem. You see, the world had changed. They were no longer hermits in the Middle East. And so they needed a way to live dedication to Mary, uh, well, to Jesus through Mary. They needed a way to be able to find her maternal protection and so on. And so with the help of the Dominicans, who were a new religious order at that time and sort of responding to the needs of the world around them, the Carmelites were reformed under their sort of new founder, St. Simon Stock. And they were reformed to be able to function in Europe in this new, uh, this new way of life as friars, moving around the world, living in stationary places, but moving around uh, and doing ministry, bringing people to Jesus through Mary and to a deep spirit of contemplation. Now, St. Simon was so worried about their capacity to make these changes that he, he went to Our Lady and he rededicated himself and the order to Mary, the Mother of God. 
And this is also why this is so important for us here at St. Mary, Mother of God Parish in Washington. And Mary appeared to St. Simon, and she gave him a message. She said, if you are dedicated to my son through me, then I will give you my protective mantle. And she handed down to him the habit of the Carmelites, the, the clothing that they wear, including a scapular. The scapular is the brown piece of material that flows down the front of the habit, goes over the head, and then down the back with a, a hole for your head to pop through. Well, the Carmelites became very popular over the course of time. Their dedication to Our Lady was very fruitful, and uh, they brought a lot of people to Christ through his Blessed Mother. And eventually those people wanted to be closer and closer to the life of the fathers and the nuns. And so what would happen is they'd say to one of the fathers, I want to be close to you and I want to have the mantle of Our Lady, but I can't live in a monastery. I've got a family, I've got kids, etc. So the fathers would reach down to the bottom of their scapular and they would cut a postage stamp sized piece of cloth off, attach it to a string and give it to one of their disciples, right? And so the third order of the Carmelites, that is to say, the, the lay people who lived a close association to the Carmelites by wearing the scapular and observing their spirituality came to be. And that's why to this day, People will say to you, oh, well, here's a scapular. You have to have it blessed. You have to wear it. It'll be protection for you. Well, there's a much deeper history, a much deeper theology, and a much deeper spirituality behind that. And the Feast of the Carmelites, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, on July 16th, is the celebration of when Mary gave the scapular to St. Simon Stock. For us, this is a beautiful spirituality that is still with us. For us, there are a lot of people in our parish who are dedicated to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and there are others who could probably afford to be dedicated to her because uh, it could be a beautiful spirituality. A lot has flown from this. People like St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Lisieux, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, also known as Edith Stein, uh, and many, many other great Carmelite saints have given riches to the Church through their teaching and through their dedication. In our own archdiocese, the very first Carmel, the very first uh, order of religious nuns in the English-speaking New World was established right here in Southern Maryland in Port Tobacco uh, at, at the, the Carmel there. It's still functioning to this day. There's a whole beautiful story behind that. Maybe we'll preach on that next time. Um, but we're going to preach over the next couple of days over different dimensions of Carmelite spirituality, different Carmelite saints, who bring us closer to Jesus through the Mother of God, Mary, the Mother of God, our patroness. And then, on Sunday, July, what is that, the 19th, we are going to bless a whole bunch of new scapulars and offer them to people who may want them and uh, let people rededicate themselves to Our Lady of Mount Carmel through this devotion to the scapular. So stay tuned for more. Pray to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the Mother of God, Pray through the intercession of the Carmelite saints, many of whom we have in our reliquary collection. Pray for the success of our parish, of our attempts to spread the gospel wherever we go, uh, to all those that we meet. Pray, pray, pray always, and know that um, I'll be praying for you. I look forward to seeing everybody at Mass this Sunday, and uh, please, if you would, pray to Our Lady of Mount Carmel for your poor parish priest. Amen.